Have you ever been intimidated? You might have been intimidated by a job or a position. You might have been intimidated by how pretty she looks. You know, at times I wonder, was Moses ever intimidated by the prospect of going up against Pharaoh? Was Elijah ever intimidated when he went up against the prophets of Baal? Or was David ever intimidated by Goliath? In my personal opinion, part of me thinks that they must have felt some type of emotion, some type of hesitation, some level of intimidation at the thought of what's in front of them. They felt that emotion, but they did not become a victim to that emotion. They still pressed forward with boldness because they knew God was on their side. Now, another part of me thinks that there is no way that Moses, Elijah, or David could have ever been intimidated. After all, they had God on their side. They all had the Almighty One, the powerful living God on their side. Whatever the exact case may be, I can relate to both scenarios. There have been times when I have been intimidated by a challenge before me. There have been times when I felt the Holy Spirit tugging and pulling at my heart to do something, to give to someone, to minister to someone. But I've hesitated. I faltered. I've been intimidated by the size of the task ahead of me by the Goliath standing before me. And so it inspires me to read stories like David versus Goliath, the perfect demonstration of what can happen when you overcome fear and fully trust in God. But I'd like to approach David and Goliath from a different angle. While many of us know this story as a Bible classic, I would venture to say it's a practical reality in our lives today. We are all Davids of some kind standing before a Goliath of some sort. The difference is, some of us are intimidated by our giant. Some of us are being ruled by our giant. Some of us are defeating our giant. We are defeating that habitual sin. We're breaking the stronghold. We're breaking the cycle. But I would like to talk to those who can't seem to get rid of the giant in their lives. These are people that, no matter what they do, they can't seem to break that cycle of sin. It's one step forward and two steps backwards. This is the last time, they say. But sooner rather than later, you're in that cycle again. These are the people who kill their Goliath but he doesn't stay dead. What I mean when I say this is, you pray and pray for your mind to be renewed. You go a few days on the right track, but then find yourself back in the same place, in the same cycle, doing the same sin. So to the person who finds themselves in this position, if you find yourself in the same scenario where Goliath keeps coming back to life, then I would like to speak to you. Here is what the Amplified Translation says for 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. We are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. I believe the main reason why some people keep seeing Goliath get back up in their lives is because we fight Goliath in the flesh. We use our willpower. We use our intelligence, our determination to defeat Goliath. Now, the thing is, 
This works for a few days. It works momentarily. But because we are waging war through our physical abilities and resources, there is no way that we can fight a spiritual enemy in this way. Here is why David was able to defeat Goliath. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, verse 45, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. He didn't say, I've come and I'm determined to defeat you. He didn't say, Goliath, nothing can stop me from defeating you because this is the moment I've been waiting for. David came in the name of the Lord. He conceded that no amount of physical strength could defeat this giant. He conceded that waging war with physical weapons is not the route to succeed in a battle. Victory is in the Lord. Victory comes from God. So if you find that the Goliath in your life keeps coming back to face you, then stop fighting with your own personal will. Stop fighting with your own determination. Stop fighting in the physical. There is a way to demolish that giant in front of you. There is a way that you can gain victory. And the way you do this is by approaching that Goliath in the name of the Lord. Rely on the strength of the Lord by presenting that giant to him. Don't face that giant or interact with it. Instead, you pray. You go directly to Jesus Christ and tell him that there is a giant I need you to take care of. There is a battle that I need you to fight on my behalf, Lord. The Word of God says in Exodus 14, verse 14, The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. That means he will take care of that giant for you. God will fight that battle for you. So be encouraged. Approach that giant. Approach that battle in the name of the Lord. He alone can break that habitual cycle. He alone can break the cycle. Your victory lies in the name of the Lord. Your victory lies in the name of Jesus Christ.